Welcome, welcome, welcome again. All right, how's everyone doing? A little update on New China. Adding these towers because I'm running out of room. I don't want to just destroy everything. I want to see how how crazy I can get this city before it all falls apart. If you want a sure way for your Sim City to fall apart in the future, you start building these factories, these Omega Core factories. It's the most self-destructive industry you can have because they're just converting oil and ore into some sort of addictive thing that everyone enjoys producing and consuming and you can't get enough of it so eventually it just starts to ruin and collapse all of your industry because you just can't produce enough but we'll see what happens I mean got a lot of money so it's going to take a lot of Omega Core to crash the city just like it's going to take a lot of willpower to destroy communism in this world. I'm just kidding. I don't really. Communism has its place, whatever. I'm not going to get political here. But in this, uh, you know, I figured I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to put up another tower, probably full of industry, because you can see industrial demand is completely up. Uh, so I'm going to put some big ass towers where it's just industry and hopefully that will populate some of these buildings and make sure everyone keeps working I had to put up another garbage dump because there's so much garbage because there's so much stuff going on now uh, so you know feel free to watch this wonderful attempt at overworking the city to its very core and uh, we'll see what happens I'm going to share with you another talk while this is going this is one uh, let's see I covered a couple different topics covered uh, it kind of starts out with another meditation figure get you guys in in the heart space uh, it's a, I call it the bubble meditation. kind of talked about bubbles last time. I'm a big bubble metaphor guy, as you'll find out in this next talk. And it goes into this concept that I, call it, I like to call the brick house of reality. And then kind of into some self-inquiry stuff, some uh, self-actualization stuff, some Nexium stuff. So uh, Nexium update. Feel free to stay tuned and listen to my my uh, reply on that. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Namaste. Namaste. It's a pleasure and honor to be here with you again. Let's take a moment to check in. Feel free to get comfortable. Feel free to transcend some of the thoughts you're having and go right into your feeling. What are you feeling right now? Where are you feeling it? Is there an uneasiness? somewhere located somewhere do you feel the space in between your body and the environment whether it be a chair or bed or the ground and let's take a couple deep breaths together focusing on the rising and the falling right in the middle of your chest. Now, 
If you have your eyes open, go ahead and close them. And if you can't close your eyes, maybe you're busy doing something, that's okay too. Just close your perception off to the outside world for a moment. We're going to go inside. And as you're looking behind your dark eyelids, imagine the ocean and the ripples on top of the water. Now go into the ocean. Go so far deep, further down than any human could ever possibly go. Go deep down in that ocean until you can't see above or below left, right, can't see anything but water. It's dark and silent. It's peaceful. It's very still. Now imagine that this water is so pure, so clear. There's not a single thing to obstruct light or awareness. It's just a clean, pure, empty reality of water. And you are sitting deep down in this pure water. And your being becomes bright, powerful light. The light that comes from the sun become the sun and shine your light through this pure translute, transparent water and just let your light go as far as it can go although you're so deep in the ocean that there's no way for that light to stop expanding And as you're shining in this wonderful, vast ocean, you notice way off in the distance, way, way off, you see some bubbles. But you can't tell where they're coming from. You don't know if they're coming up or down or side. But they're coming right at you. They're so small at first, and they're getting bigger. And there's so many bubbles now, and they're getting closer. And there's so many bubbles coming towards you that eventually these bubbles completely surround you. And they keep coming and coming. And you can notice the vast amount of bubbles in this water because of the way that your light is reflecting right off of the surface. And there's so many bubbles, so far, so vast, that there's up and down and left and right, all there is is the bubbles in your water 
and your bright light shining around these bubbles. Now open your eyes. This is reality. This is where we are. We are in a vast landscape where our inner light, our energetic force, our beingness is shining across a vast landscape creating concepts and ideas and stories and through somehow through some of these bubbles you've come upon your life I think this bubble analogy has been used <clears throat> before. I'm sure I'm not the first one to come up with this. But it's how I see things. It gives a great example. The only thing I would add is that the ocean your sunlight and the bubbles <clears throat> are all in one bubble that is being reflected into your awareness of what's really going on. And that one bubble <clears throat> the ultimate oneness with everything. And that bubble, <clears throat> excuse me, that bubble is sitting inside of you. So anything that happens inside of that bubble is actually something that's happening inside of you. So in other words, everything that happens, happens in you and is a part of you. Now that sun that being of light that is inside of the oneness is spirit. And spirit is made completely of light and works inside of the oneness, the one bubble, in order to illuminate all of the various aspects of itself. And it does this by forming a relationship with the self, with your true I amness. Self inquiry is a fascinating practice. It's a practice of asking the question, who am I? Who am I? And when we go deep with that question, we can find, we can be led through our rational minds right to the outside of that bubble, the outside of the oneness. 
self-inquiry is like a window in a house when the outside of the house is your true self and the house itself is reality. And there are moments when reality catches you. You're looking in from inside the house and, and you're looking at the things in the house. And this house is made up of beliefs. The way the house is made is beliefs. And each of these beliefs is made up of a value. So think of this as like a brick house. And each of these bricks are values, something that you value. They're placed in a certain way to make this house up. And that way is a hierarchy. And that hierarchy in a whole is your belief system. Your beliefs are a hierarchy of values. And when who you are is looking from inside the house, you start to get an idea you start to build a reality of your values and your beliefs and you make that you call it a reality and then you say at some point you know who i am is this reality i'm the inside of this house i am the makeup of the belief systems through values i am that and then you know you realize that the reality because it's created in your mind it starts to change. Your beliefs start to shift, your value structures change, the house starts to shape shift, and reality starts to become a little bit wobbly. And you realize that the house isn't unshakable. What's unshakable is that who experiences the shifting of reality. And that's you. That's who you are. And the spiritual path is one of maneuvering around a house and either coming across a window that shows you who you are and also maybe allows you to just go out that window or it's a, it's a path of constructing a, a window. And once we find that window, we're able to become truth. And that truth, the one truth, is the answer to who am I? And so, again, asking yourself that question, going into it deeply, and becoming self-realized, is taking your ability to, to make reality, using that ability, to, to find yourself out of this this house you've built of conceptual beliefs. And it, it's also something that you don't even need to escape from. When you tell yourself that you don't know who you are, when you have to ask the question, who am I? you're looking at the walls of the home. Everybody can just look inward and become self-realized. But you have to turn away from the walls of your home. You have to look inside instead of looking out. And there are a lot of tricksters out there on this wall who are going to point you towards 
traps. They're going to say, oh, here is, here's how you construct a window. And then they can, then you're busy constructing and constructing all the meanwhile being taken advantage of by tricksters. Like this Nexium cult, I just read an article by Nikki Klein, who is one of Keith Raniere's loyal devotees. Even after he was arrested, she stayed with him, rallied for his release, and, you know, just tried to protest and say, oh, he's innocent, and all this, you know, FBI planted evidence. I'm not saying the FBI didn't plant evidence, but... I think that if you just take a step back and listen to the people that dealt with this Keith Raniere and this Nexium, I think their testimonies alone show that this guy just was kind of not cool, you know, like he was pretty not cool. Um, but it's interesting to hear Nikki Klein come out because like, she was like stone cold devoted. So I give her props on that. I don't know what sparked it. You know, maybe this is like a PR campaign. Maybe she really doesn't, you know, renounce him. I don't know. But it was interesting what she said about how he hooked her because he he asked her like something like oh what's what's the most important question that you, you know you could ask an omniscient being and you know she was like well who am i i want to know that and so keith flipped it and took this thing where you just you go to the opposite route of whatever you want And going to the opposite is supposed to, like, combine your karmas somehow so that it equals out and boom, you you are it. It just, it's a little twisty, you know, it's a little twisty. Like, you know, basically he was like, well, what are you most scared of, Nikki Klein? And she was like... My biggest fear is that I would be sleeping with you, you know? And so Keith Raniere's like, well, that's your biggest fear. You got to overcome that shit. You got to sleep with me, you know? And, you know, it's like... the 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 tra- He was a master at making traps. And then he abused people through the mental traps that he created for them. And it's like, you know, who are you? Well, maybe you're, you, you are what you end up to be, you know, like he was the master at traps and he ended up in a really, a really big trap and that's prison, you know, life sentence. You know, legally, you can't get out. So far. So he ended up in a trap. He is a trap. He created all these traps. And I, why I like Ramdas is because he's like, you got to find, you know, that all these methods are traps, but you have to find the self-destructive traps. You know, traps are only good insofar as they can lead you to a place where you have to let go of it. And Ranieri never got to that point. He was always like, I am more rational than you. I am the most intelligent man in the world. So you must listen to me. I will guide you there. But it's also interesting because if you really believed that the most rational thought in your mind was somebody that was a completely evil, awful person and actually didn't have any, you know, he didn't have your best interest at heart. 
And you're like, well, that's not, that's the opposite path I want to take. So it's like, you're saying rational intelligence, you know, beyond what I can comprehend is evil is the opposite of what I think that in turn should maybe that crushes your own rationale. So you transcend rational, you know, maybe that too. Maybe he's doing, maybe he put himself in prison. He became an awful person. And then he had to show everybody how awful he was just so that these people could transcend their own rational thought and say, well, being rational and being intelligent only gets you so far. And so what's beyond rational thought? That's the answer to who, who am I? Who you are is beyond rational thought. It's beyond intelligence. It is your only truth. It's the unchangeable thing. Everything intelligent and rational happens in the mind. Everything in the mind changes. So what's rational today could in a hundred years be completely crazy. Hell in the next week, it could be completely crazy. You know, Donald Trump became president that happened. So everyone got locked down because of COVID. And I think we all understand if we pay attention, we all understand how dangerous COVID is, was. History will be, history will tell on that. I'm not going to get into that. Um, I digress. The moment we can go beyond rational thought, we can sit in the I amness. We can not just look at spirit and his relationship into making everything happen that we know of in the mind. We can become spirit and we can become one with everything. And then we realize that, okay, that's cool. But what's even cooler is sitting back in, in the trueness of I am and letting all the other things unfold naturally, because why the hell not? Why that? Because it's all who you are. So just let it be experience that. And now what the practice is, is the interesting karmic practice of letting the things that happen be, and then responding to that in the appropriate manner, which is not so serious, you know, like, okay, horrible things you're going to witness, horrible tragedies will occur, are occurring, have, and always will. These are horrible, bad things that are in your life. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. And how are you going to be with that? So the practice is how can we be with the things that unfold in the natural oneness of our spirit? And this is why we have a practice and we start shaping our homes. we are become interior decorators of spiritual understanding of the ways people have decorated their homes who have come up with, you know, realizations in the past. We start doing that with us. We start to go down those, you know, go down those ways to eventually go out a window. Once we go out the window, we're never in the same home again. Like if I were me going back into the house I built prior to my realization would be as crazy as that memento guy tattooing himself up a mystery after he's already solved the mystery of who killed my wife. You know, he's just like, okay, I'm going to forget 
and I'm going to start playing a murder mystery where at the end of this, I'm going to end up killing somebody again. It's a psychopath. I would have to be a psychopath to go back into that house. You know, that's how I see it. Because we are all in this, in this idea, you know, in this framework, we are all one. Why would we want to forget that and start playing me versus them? You know, us versus them again. What? No. So we meditate to observe the inner monologue to disassociate the feelings we have with our thoughts. We cut those off and we focus in on feelings and we witness our thoughts. And then we become quiet as to sit in our realization, which is who we are. Again, you don't need to build a window. You don't need to have a window. You just need to sit with your eyes closed. Stop identifying with the pictures on your wall. Just sit in who we are. And it is a relief. It is a breath of fresh air when we can just be. And so for the next five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 or however long you would like, I invite you to sit with me.